Hi and welcome to a new tutorial on my channel. I'm Andrea and today we are going to be making this beautiful cowl that comes with a matching headband. These two patterns come together in one PDF file which you can get from my shop. The link is in the description. You can download it from there and then follow along with the video. Both of these start the same and I will have a separate video just for finishing off the headband. And in this video we will deal only with the cowl. These are both made using the same yarn and two sizes of Tunisian crochet hooks, a smaller one for the headband and a larger one for the cowl. This is a beginner friendly project. It's very easy to learn and to remember and it creates this gorgeous texture. You can make the cowl as tall as you like. It depends on how much yarn you have and what the person you're making it for likes. For example, for someone who doesn't really like the fabric bunching around their neck, you can make a shorter version. This one I made with 150 grams of yarn and the headband with the rest of the 50 grams. So I made this whole set with just two balls of yarn. Now let's get the yarn and hooks ready and let's get started. To make the cowl you will need about 100 grams of size 4 yarn which has about 120 meters per 100 grams. This is the same as this kind of yarn, which is 60 meters per 50 grams. You could also use decay weight yarn, but this is much thinner, so you will need different amounts. So I will make a different pattern for using decay weight yarn. So for the cowl, you will use the full 100 gram or 120 meters of uh, yarn that's in one ball. This yarn you can only find in Rosman, but you can find a lot of yarns that are very similar to this in the same weight. Just look at the weight per 100 grams. It should be at around 120-125 meters. Ideally, you should have one or two balls of weight for yarn, which is worsted weight. On this yarn label, it says that you should use a 7 mm hook, and normally when you do Tunisian crochet, you want to use a hook that's 2 mm bigger than the yarn label recommends. For the cowl, I'll be using a 9 mm hook, and it comes with a cable. You also need a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. You will need this just to snip off the ends and finish off. We begin with a slip knot on the hook, as always, leaving the tail. We make a loop and pick up the main yarn, put it on the hook, and then we chain 61. Or however many chains you have to make, depending on what you have in the pattern. You could also use a different kind of cast on, and if you do, make sure you have 62 loops on the hook at the end of the cast on. To cast on the foundation row, we just pick up loops in the back bumps of these chains until we have 62 loops on the hook. If you come from a different school of thought in the Tunisian crochet world, then you will probably want to chain one more and then skip the first chain and pick up the loop in the second chain from hook and just keep on picking up the loops from there. The first row is the most difficult and normally takes the most time because you have to work into a chain. After that, every row is easier because you have a fabric to hold on to while working your stitches. At the end of the row you should have 62 loops on your hook and the cable and you should count now to make sure that you have enough. And then to do the return pass you chain one then yarn over, pull through two, to the beginning of the row. Now 
As you can see, the return pass is much faster than the forward pass because you only have to yarn over pull through two many times. To make the first row in the pattern repeat, we pick up a Tunisian simple stitch by putting the hook behind the first vertical bar and pulling up a loop. Then we have a purl stitch, we bring the yarn to the front of the hook, insert the hook behind the first vertical bar, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we repeat this simple stitch, purl stitch, all the way to the end of the row and as you can see it's already much easier than in the foundation row. Because I started with 61 chains, that means I have 60 main stitches to work a pattern on. I will do this a total of 30 times. The pair of simple stitch and purl stitch. You should end with a purl stitch and then you have the last stitch of the row. You put the hook behind these two vertical bars that you see crisscrossing if you look at the piece of fabric from the side. So you have these two loops here, put the hook behind them, pick up a loop and then chain one, yarn over and pull through two all the way to the beginning of the row. If you repeat this row, you will have some nice ribbing going on, but we don't want ribbing, we want the honeycomb stitch. So on the second row of the pattern, we start with a purl stitch. And then everything is the same. We have a simple stitch and a purl stitch. Just keep going like this until the end of the row. We will end the pattern repeat with a simple stitch. If you get distracted or sometimes stop in the middle of a row, it's easy to pick up where you were left because you can see if you have a purl stitch here, you will have a simple stitch. If you had a simple stitch, you'll do a purl stitch. So even if you put the work down, this stitch pattern is very obvious and you will know exactly what you have to do to continue. and on a simple stitch and then just as on the previous row we put the hook behind these two loops pick up a loop chain one yarn over pull through two then we will keep on repeating these two rows one that begins with a simple stitch and one that begins with a pro stitch until the fowl is the height we want I am going for about 20 centimeters or until we run out of yarn, in which case you want to stop before you run out of yarn because you want to bind off the last row. For binding off the last row you will need about half the yarn you need for one row. You can weigh the fabric after each row to see the difference and then you will know when you have that much yarn left you should stop to do the bind off. I will continue working on the scowl and I will show you the progress and then we will bind off together and sew it up. Now I've used up the whole skein of yarn and I have enough to bind off and then sew up the edge but I decided that I would continue to work on this to use up the rest of the yarn that I have in this color because I already made a headband and I don't want to make another headband. So one ball of this yarn, that's 100 grams, should be enough to make two headbands or one cow of this size. And if you want to, if you have two balls, for example, you can use one and a half for a taller cow and a half for the headband. Of course, if you make different sizes, then you will use up different amounts of yarn. But I will make the best of my situation right now and I will continue working on this until I use this one up as well. The cowl is nearly finished. I made enough rows for a tall cowl and I will show you how to finish off the last row 
to bind off the Tunisian crochet because we started with a Tunisian simple stitch foundation row we will finish with the Tunisian simple stitch bind off to do that we just pick up a loop in each of the vertical loops and then slip it so we will make slip stitches all across the top side of the cowl Upon reaching the last stitch we put one last slip stitch in there and then leave a long tail because we'll be using this to sew up the side. I usually cut it a bit longer than twice the length of the seam I'm going to sew up and then I will cut the excess yarn and then pull the end through the last loop just to secure it. This is the finished cowl all laid out and we will turn it and make a seam. Bring the long end down close to you so that you can sew up along the seam. To sew up this seam we will be using a ladder stitch. First we put the yarn through the eye of the tapestry needle and we begin with a false stitch on the end here to continue the pattern that is on the edge. We begin on the left side with the yarn. We put the needle through the first stitch from top to bottom, pull up the yarn and then we go back through the first stitch on the left and a bit come out a bit higher. Now we created a false stitch here that continues the pattern on the edge. To make the ladder stitch we will put the needle on the right side now through a stitch, not through the edge here, bring it up and pull on the end. Only pull enough that it's not too tight but it's not loose either. Now we will go back to the other side using the same technique on, at the same level. Put the needle through and come up a bit higher and we continue like this picking up a few loops on one side and then going to the other side and going up. As you can see I'm working between the rows because I don't want to have some gaps where the rows are. Just pull on the tail once in a while and continue working like this. Continue doing this for the whole height of the cowl and then when you're finished you can weave in all the ends and you have your finished piece. For the headband you will have a different technique to sew up the two ends so check out that video if you want to know how to finish off the headband. At the end, when you're almost finished, you bring up the needle through the middle of the top stitch and then create another full stitch by coming with the needle behind the stitch on the other side, the top of the stitch on the other side, and then finish off the full stitch by inserting the needle through the middle of this stitch. Now you have a neat edge and you cannot tell where the seam is from the outside. What is left is to weave in the ends. I hope you enjoyed this cowl tutorial and I also hope that you will make a headband that goes with this cowl. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you want to know when I publish more videos please subscribe to my emails and hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. You will find all the relevant links in my description. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you will make many cowl and headband sets for your family for this winter. I hope it will bring them a lot of joy. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!